Do you feel well? I praise our Lord for your health. You look good. Oh, this is uh, the grace of God upon us. Amen. So let us applause our God with the mighty hands. Even a shout voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. This is a great day again to be before the Lord. This is a morning that God has made for us. And he has something great to give us today. I will speak with you this noon. The title of my message is The Benefits of Being a Christian. Are you Christian? Are you a believer? Are you saved? There is many, many benefits. There's many blessings we have, we as a Christian. But sometimes we don't know. But I felt yesterday when I was preparing my sermon with you, actually changed my message when I was uh, ready to finish my my sermon, the Spirit of the Lord told me to teach you about the benefits we as a Christian we have or blessings to become a Christian. Sometimes we don't know, but the Bible is clear. Just how we use one scripture, I cannot enumerate all the benefits as a Christian we have. But through one passage, one scripture, I will try to see with you four benefits we have as a Christian. Let us read in the book of Galatians. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 up to 29. Galatians 3, 28 up to 29. Can we read together? Are you there? Can you see the scripture? Okay, let us read. The one, two, three. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. You are all one in Christ Jesus, 29, and if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. By reading this scripture, the Holy Spirit revealed me or opened my eyes to see four benefits we have as a Christian. Number one, no class distinctions. Say no class distinctions. Maybe there were the class distinctions is a new term for some of us. Let me just give you a picture to understand the spirit behind the Paul, the apostles, when he was writing to Roman 
or to Galatians or to Philippi about the class distinctions. During the Roman Empire, in, back in history, the people, the Roman Empire had the three main groups. These three groups, one was called Patricians. Patricians was one group in Roman Empire. Let us say today, America. Back to the first and second century, the Roman Empire was a very great. They had class distinctions. The first class was called the Patricians. The second, Plebeians. The third was slaves. Let me try to say, to explain this. Patricians were considered as the highest and wealthiest social class. The people who were very rich, who had big mansions, big land, and these people were among the senate of the country. Among them were people who uh, ran the government. They were politicians. They were very uh, respectful people. So this class was a pedigree, was uh, like a lord. In English term, they call them the lords. They were like great people, people with the great status, great respect. They call them patricians. The second plebeian, plebeianus, this was like a, a working class. These people, they were made of middle class. Middle class people, uh, they were people, they were not rich uh, and they were not also poor. But among them, you could see the common people, common people, people who are, uh, let us say, who are poor, not really poor, different classes. We call them the middle classes today in the, the sociolo sociology terms of today the is the middle class. To the, back to the Roman, they were called Pe uh, plebeians. So they made the class of working people and they were make the majority of people. Majority of people were working class or middle class. So the third class was a sla were slave. People were slave. People slave were in the third class. These people were bought from different culture, different nations, different countries to come to serve. During the Roman Empire, a slave, you, should, you could go to the bank and give the bank a slave as a guarantee. They were like a domain. They were like a private uh, domain. You could there, you tell the bank, give money, I have my slave. So they were like object. There were no value for them except to work hard. So slave people were treated like um, animals, like a machine. They were like uh, people without value during the, the, the time of Romans. So everyone was happy to have a slave. I think you know better the history of this country. This country also in the past had a slave, especially black people.
who came from Africa, people from Europe, from America, they went to Africa to buy slaves. Reason why you have many black in this country, they come from Africa, they were people of Africa. They had their land in Africa. But people from America went to Africa, they bought them, so they come as a slave. A slave doesn't have a right to have his own name. He is called after his master's name. Reason why we find many black people here, they don't have African name. They have American names. Some of you who came from Africa, even who is giving birth, birth here in, in America, you still have the name of the home back because the name connect, connect us with, with the land where we came from. So our black people, African American, they have the names after their master, their owners. So they lost their names. They don't have, they didn't have a right to have their own name. So you understand to become a slave. So today, our class distinction is based on social economic status. Social economic status, which in uh, sociology or, or anthropology they call SES, SES, social economic status. So, uh, the formula is when we want to see your class, we consider three things your income, your education, and your occupation. You understand? Income, education, and occupation. You see, when you want to do something here in this country, they ask, tell us your income. How much do you own? Do you have a property? Do you have a house? Do you rent a house? I think you are familiar with those kind of questions, is it? So they want actually to know your class. They will class you according to income. Then they will ask you about your education. School, high school, degree, diploma, so they will ask you that to know your education, your background about education. This makes clear the dis distinction between you and your neighbor. Also, occupation. What is your job? Tell us about your job. They want to know your occupation because your occupation we define your income. We define your education. So today we have this class. Sometime they will ask you, give us your zip code. Because people who have the same zip code have the same income. Today I can define you based on your zip code. When they see zip code, they say, oh, this place is not safe for my children, for me. Or oh, this place met, meets my wages. I can live in this area because I have this money. So this is what we call the class. We class, we categorize people according to their income, education, and occupation. So, uh, 
This equates to three stratification factors, what we call the wealth, power, and the privilege. Wealth, power, and the privilege. Do you understand? The social class. Tell us about your power, your wealth, and your prestige. So, when Paul was writing to Roman, to Galatians, in his time, people received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Many of them were rich, other were poor, others were slave. You understand three categories? Many were rich, others common people, middle class, others slave. During the preaching of Paul, all the Gentiles, the term Gentiles means Greek. Greek because according to religion, Religion and distinction, the world, the world they were divided into two parts. One was Jewish, another world was Greek. All people who were not Jewish, Jews, Jewish people, became Gentiles. Gentiles means Greek people. Because at that time, people spoke the Greek language. So, there was a distinction in religion. Jewish people and the Greek. We, all of us, we were called the Greek. Greek, which means the Gentiles. Gentiles, which means the pagan. Pagan means the strangers. Strangers means the foreigners. People who are not Jewish. People who are not Jews were called the Gentiles. So, when Paul was writing and preaching, many Gentiles, the foreigners, came to receive Jesus, the Jesus of Jews, God of Jews. People, uh, Paul was a minister to the Gentiles people to tell them about the God of Jews. Because the Jews could not share their God to the Gentiles. So Paul received the revelation to go to preach this God to the nations. Because each nation has its God, the small God. They were worshipping idolaters, idols. So when Paul came, he said, no, this is not a true God. We have, we as Jews, we as Hebrews, we have a real God. He's the maker of the world and heaven. So people believed to his message. When they believed to his message, many Greek people, people who spoke Greek, came to Jesus. So they called them Gentiles. They called them pagans. Pagans came to know Jesus. In theology language, they called them heathen. Heathen means people who worship other gods. So when people come to Jesus from their idols, from their small gods, they became as Jewish. So it was a little confusing. You will see a slave coming to church, a normal class coming to Jesus, then the wealth come to Jesus. And they will sit together in the church. So when time of offering come, the worst people will tell slave, go and do this. Go and clean the church. The common people also will come and give respect to the rich people. The rich people will come to the church and they get the first chairs. Then Paul say, no, in Jesus, there is no distinction. In Jesus, there is no Greek, there is no Jew. In Jesus, there is no free, there is no slave. 
in Jesus, there's no the superior and the inferior. We all, we are one. Praise the Lord. So this is a great benefit. The, the slaves of, of the first century were relieved because of that message. When Paul wrote a message to Philemon, Philemon had a slave. His slave, his name was Onesimus. So Paul sent a letter to Philemon and said, Consider uh, uh, Onesimus like me. He is your brother. He is no longer your slave. He is your brother in Jesus. You understand? So there is no class distinction today. If you are rich, if you are not rich, if you are educated, if you are not educated, if you have whatever class you have, in Jesus Christ, we are the same. There is no female, there is no male. There is no gender. In Jesus, we are one. Praise the Lord. So don't feel ashamed to say, okay, uh, 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 I'm a female, maybe uh, I'm not allowed to preach, to teach. I know there is some doctrine they don't allow women to preach, but they don't follow this scripture. There's no distinction in Jesus. You can preach, you can pray. You can do whatever the Lord puts in your heart to do. Because we have this benefit in Jesus. There's no class distinction. No race, no black, no white, no yellow. We are the same in the Lord. Praise the Lord. You have something to share with me. You have something I don't have. You can give me. I can give you. You need me. I need you. In Jesus, we complement each other. In Jesus, there is no separation, segregation, ratio. No, in Jesus, we are one. Praise the Lord. The book of uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, it said, For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Be slave, be free, be woman, be man, be Greek, be Jews. We have one tap where we drink the water. It's in a spirit. We all go to the one supermarket. Holy Spirit. We have one teacher. It's the Holy Spirit. We have one leader. It's the Holy Spirit. Be whatever you want. But if you wanted to drink, the living water, we go to the Holy Spirit. We have the same place where we have our drink. So there is no distinction between you and me. We are the same in Jesus. There is no distinction between Gentiles, believers and Jews. No distinction between slave and the free. Between male and the female. We all are one in Jesus Christ. This is first the benefit we have in Jesus Christ. The second benefit, believers, believers share the same privileges, the same as of the Jews. The same as of the Jews. You remember when God made Adam, after Adam has sinned, the Bible tells us there was separation between man and God. From that time, God was looking if he can find someone trustworthy. From him, he can raise a godly generation. So he found Abraham. Abraham, in 
him, God see the faith. And he was trustworthy. After going through many tests with God, God has tested Abraham for many, many things. And Abraham passed the test. Then God said, okay, through him, I will bless many people. So Jews people came from Abraham. Though Abraham was not the Jews, Abraham was the Gentiles, but through him, a Jewish people came. You understand? Abraham was a stranger, was a foreigner, was a Gentile, was not a Jew. He came from Mesopotamia. But through him, God made a covenant, the circumcision. Circumcision was made by blood. So all people who will come through Abraham after his circumcision, the line will become a line of covenant, a line of promise. So those people were called Jewish people. Through Isaac, through Jacob, through Judah, Jewish people came there. So they had many privileges from God. Around the nation, all the nation who were on in the world, Jewish people become the might nation. Become the nation that had a privilege. I can say that their social class was higher than other nations. Because God wants to reveal himself to this nation. So this nation may become evangelist to tell other nation about the goodness of God. So God will do miracles among them. He will give them rain on due time. He will give them sun on a season. God will give them uh, crops. He will give them uh, many things good. So other nations will come to ask them, what are you? What do you have? What is your secret? Why do you have rain on its season? Why do you have sun in its season? Why you have good things? Then Jewish people will say, we have a true God. So those nations will come to do what? To seek after the God of Jewish. Unfortunately, Jewish people didn't fully understand this and didn't fully accomplish the mission. But they were superior to other nations. According to Jewish people, according to Exodus 19, 4, 6, you have seen what I did to the Egyptians and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then it shall be a special treasure to me above all people. You understand? Above all people. For all the earth is mine, and it shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. You see, God is speaking to Jewish people that I have brought you from Egypt. Egypt is a, a, a symbol of a darkness, of sins. So I redeem you. I brought you. I, 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 I brought you and I bore you on wings of eagles. God himself is called himself eagles. He put them in his wings from Egypt to Canaan, the promised land. You understand? So I did this. I took you on my back so you can be above all other nations. So you will become a, 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 a priest, a kingdom of priests, a kingdom of a priest. You will become kings and a priest. You will teach other nations. You will dominate to other nations. You understand? You will become greater than other nations. You will rule over other nations because you are on my back. You, you are my people. So, Israel was designed 
by God to become a superior, to become above other nations. They had this privilege before the Lord, the privilege to become superior to other nations. Their social class was very high comparing to other people in the sight of the Lord. Amen? So, we share now as a Christian the same heritage, the same privilege. We believe that now. This is nation of Israel. They are above other nations. So, we believers, we Christian, we have this privilege. According to 1 Peter 2, 9 and 10, 1 Peter 2, 9, 10. But you are a chosen. Can you read it with me? But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. That you may ah, proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness. You remember Egypt? Mm -hmm. You were called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Who once, ah, this is wonderful. Who once were not, where you were not the people, but are now the people of God who had now obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, praise the Lord. So, we, other nations, we were not people. The only people were Israel. But we, when we receive Jesus Christ, when we become Christian, we share the same social class as the Jews, Jewish people. If you become Christian, if you become believer, you are no longer slave. You are no longer Gentile. You are, you are no longer a simple man. You become now a people of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are a chosen generation. We are chosen. We, 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 we were elected by God. We become a royal priesthood. The same message to Israel. You remember? Where, where we read in uh, Exodus 19. This was for Israel, for Jewish people. But now this message came to us if we believe Jesus. This is the benefit we have. We, we share the same promises. We, we share the same advantages. We were not people, but we are people. We are his own special people. Actually, this title was the title of Jewish people. We have here four titles. Number one, a chosen generation. Number two, royal priesthood. Number four, the holy nation. Sorry, three. Number four, his own special people, peculiar people, special people. He told the Jewish that I brought you out of G Egypt. Here, the Apostle Peter said that you were called out of darkness. Darkness equals Egypt. To become his peculiar people. His special people. To become the priest. People who we announce his message. Amen. I, I'm just giving you just this is like a, a titles. I we go now in the, the coming days, in details of everything, we understand you, you are calling, you are tight, you are privileged being in Jesus Christ. Some people, they just walk and they say, okay, I'm a believer, you go to church, my church is now in temple, but they don't fully understand the meaning to become a believer. You share the same promise as the Jew, Jews. Praise the Lord. Number three, 
benefits is believer share the same spiritual father of faith. Abraham with the Jews. We share the same spiritual father. Spiritual father of Jewish, Jewish, Jewish people is Abraham. So today we also we are called the son of Abraham. You understand? But Abraham is not really our speech uh, is not our biological father but today because of Jesus Christ we share also the same spiritual father Isaiah 51 1 2 we, we see the history of Abraham the Bible say he was alone listen to me you who pass righteousness and who seek the Lord look to the rock from which you were cut and to the query, from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. Abraham was called by God. He became from him. He had many sons and daughters. So Abraham became, became the father of the Jews and the Gentiles. According to Romans 4, 16, 17. Therefore, the promise comes by faith, though that it may be by grace and may be granted to all Abraham's offspring, not only to those who are of the law, but all those who have the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, the God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. So because of Jesus, Gentiles become Abraham's children. Because of Jesus, we too become the sons of Abraham. According to Galatians 3.29, and if you are Christ's, then you are, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You, you, you understand that? The father of the Jewish people is Abraham. We too, if we are in Christ, if we become believer, we become Abraham's seed. Abraham children. So we share the same spiritual father. Amen. Number four. Our benefits. Believers share the same blessings of Abraham with the Jews. Wow. If we are Abraham's seed, now we must have his blessing. Say blessing. Blessings. If your father is rich, you will become rich, is it? Is it true? You will have inheritance, is it true? Okay. If our father, our great father, Abraham, was rich, this means that we become also rich. That's logic. This is beyond the logic. It's spiritual now, spiritual sense spiritual reality Abraham let, let me let me uh, just show you the the Abraham blessings the blessing of Abraham Genesis 12 to 3 I will make you a great nation that's what <laughs> great nation I will bless you I will make you a name a great you understand the blessing of our father okay he will become a great nation. He will be blessed by God. God will make his name to become great. You shall be a blessing. Wow. A source of blessing. Are you a source of blessing? Are you blessing others? Are you sure? Okay, thank you. Uh, verse 3. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. 
This is for Abraham. Let's see Genesis again, 24, 34, 36. Genesis 24, 30, 34, 36. So he said, Who is this? Eliezer. Eliezer said, I am. Takea, can you switch to the other verse? Genesis 24. Good. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. The Lord has blessed my master greatly. Abraham was, ah, yeah, yeah, was blessed great. Oh, the word, uh, actually, when are we, are, we, are, we, are we going deep about Abraham blessing, you understand this word greatly. He was blessed greatly. First of all, to be blessed is this one thing, but greatly blessed is another thing. Amen. He was greatly blessed. He has given him, number one, flocks. Number two, herds. Number three, silver. Number four, gold. Number five, male. Number six, female. What? Servant. Number seven, camels. Number eight, donkeys. Wow. Number nine, Sarah, my master's wife, a boa, a son to my servant, to my master, when she was old, and to him, he has given all that he has. Oh, if we are Abraham's sons, he will give us all that he has. You understand? <laughs> I know you don't understand, but you will understand. Okay. Blessings to Abraham to his biological children. Genesis 22:18. In your seed, all the nation of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. All Jewish people are blessed. Today, I will give you the statistic about the wealth that the Jew, Jewish people have, you will understand. Today, many, 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 many things belong to, to Jewish people. Did you know that? Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Because they belong to Abraham's seed. So, me believer, me Christian, you Christian, why we don't have this? We are Abraham seed. You understand? But you, yet you are poor. Yet you remain in the third class. Working class or slave. Because the job you are doing is not uh, really uh, a job of uh, Abraham's daughter or son. Uh, it's a job of uh, even the slave of Abraham didn't have the, the, the same wages like you. Even he suffered. <laughs> but so we, we, we're going to change things. Praise the Lord. We want things to be changed. Amen? Amen. So let us have see about we Christian. Because we are Abraham's sons. Galatians 3.14. Galatians 3.14. Are we together? Can we read? He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles. Who is Gentile? Me. Through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Praise Lord. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to you. Do you have that blessing? By word. 
just by word amagambo but i'm daughter of abraham show me your your check i want to see your check <laughs> you see the bible is true and the bible is correct so if today me and you we, we, we have a promise to, be, to, to have a Abraham blessing, but we don't touch them. There's something wrong. Do you want to know that something wrong? Come into my teaching. I will preach you this series. You will understand. I want you to come from one level to the other level. Just I want you to give these four benefits so we will go in deep. You will understand each benefit has uh, is good for you, has impacted your life. Amen? Amen. Act 26, 28, 29. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuaded me to become a Christian. Yeah. It's bad to become a Christian. If we are Christian, we partake. We are partakers of the same blessing of the Jewish people. And Paul said, yes, I would, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and all together, such as I am, except for this chance. He said, I, my wish is everyone to become Christian. When you become Christian, you go into Abraham seeds. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord help you. Also may you become a good Christian, a believer. Soon, we're gonna talk in uh, uh, details every benefits. I believe this will help you to go up. This will help you to go to another level because the level you are must change. You need to go to the higher level. But you cannot go to the higher level if you don't really understand the benefit of being a Christian. May the Lord bless you. Let us pray. Just rise and pray. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God no I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child I'm no longer a slave to fear. No. I am a child of God. No longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Oh Lord, we are no longer slave to fear. We are no longer common people. We are no longer ordinary people. We are your people. Peculiar people. You are special people. Heirs of promises. Abraham's seeds. No distinction, Lord. We are no longer slave. We have a benefit to be in you. We are daughter and sons of light. In you we have a light. In you we have a life. 
In you we have a privilege. In you we have many advantages. In you we have benefits. In you we have a life. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You have redeemed us, Lord. You have redeemed us, Lord, to become the partakers of Abraham's blessing. I pray for everyone. Bless everyone. Let this week, Lord, he may, she may experience Abraham's blessing. He may and she may see you. In the name of Jesus, I pray for their health. They may be well. Let everyone, Lord, this week may see you have a real experience with you. Touch everyone today and forever. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.